Powered by Riverside. Hello and welcome into the sad fan where we talk about the good, the bad, and everything that made you sad. And you know what used to make a lot of people sad, Wes? What? Not not getting picked for the team. And what's really interesting about that is it goes all the way back to when you were an elementary school kid and why kids yes. wouldn't even just go out for a team. They'd be just they gave up sports immediately because they didn't want that like hurt of being the last or that embarrassment of being the last pick. Nobody and, wanted to be the last one picked. Yeah, and it appears you don't have to deal with that stuff anymore. Because uh, the Clippers, Kawhi Leonard, and USA Basketball released a mutual statement as to why Kawhi Leonard is no longer on Team USA Basketball. And I'm thinking, could you imagine being that kindergartner with a PR team that put a little spin on you being the last picked <laughs> okay. for like the tag game that you were about to play? Well, what was their, uh, what was their PR release for why? <laughs> Essentially, they mutually decided to part ways, stating that it, it would be better for both Team USA and Kawhi Leonard and the Clippers for him to focus on basketball activities and forego the Olympics this year. Well, sounds like he pissed somebody off. Sounds like he got cut. Sounds like he couldn't hack it, couldn't make it. I mean, we're not going to see until next I mean, year. He's like the most injured NBA player, right? He is. He's, he had ACL we'll surgery not too long ago. He's been through a lot. Yeah, you know what? I don't want to do that. I want to make fun of it. So then what does Team USA do is of they go off do. and get – they go off and they get Derek White. Derek White. From the, from the uh, Celtics, pardon me, instead of Jalen Brown. Now, have you seen Jalen Brown's press release about this yet, about Team USA Basketball? <laughs> oh, I didn't. I didn't realize there was one. Yeah, you should pull up uh, Team USA's uh, Jalen, or pardon me, Jalen Brown, not Team USA's press release on him not being selected for Team USA. Uh, his teammates now, Jason Tatum and Derek White, are both on Team USA, both selected before what Jason Kidd referred to as the best player on the Celtics. I don't know if you guys remember that from the finals. Yeah. <laughs> but, but both of his teammates selected prior to him. I mean, it could be because Derek White is a role player. Or it could be because uh, maybe Jalen Brown pissed off the wrong people. That yeah. could be what oh, it is. His Nike criticism. <laughs> what what do you have to say about Nike? I don't know. But you know who runs Team USA? Who? Nike. <laughs> Phil Knight. You mean Nike. they supply the? You mean they supply the apparel? Yeah, you know, just like they only do that for Oregon, right? That's all they do for Oregon too. They just supply the apparel. I <laughs> I don't really think that's the reason. But whatever you say, you so you think so you do think that Derek White's a better basketball player than Jalen Brown? Then no. So so what is it, Wes? Which one is? I it? don't know, but it's not <laughs> Nike. And it's there's other the options out there. There's other the options out there. He's a better player. What what is going? So what's the reasoning behind this then? Derek White's not a better player than Jalen Brown, and it's not because of Nike. position need. Position need. Position need. <laughs> You're gonna make up every excuse you can for this. Any excuse you. I don't think it's it? gonna be freaking. I think we're seeing something right now. You were the. I don't kid think that it's wasn't Nike. You were the kid that wasn't picked first, weren't you? You're right now going to pick up your shield for all the kids that weren't picked. <laughs> I'm so confused at what that has to do with me saying there's probably a different reason aside from Nike. Because you you were like, no, there's a different reason why he wasn't picked, guys. I don't freaking know it, but that's... That day. Okay, you're sounding like a conspiracy theorist. That's Nike, bro. <laughs> Nike, you're sounding like Jalen Brown right now. What was the statement that Jalen Brown made? Why why are you backing Jalen Brown so much right now? I'm that's what I want to know. Jalen Brown. I find the whole situation why, comical. But why why, are, why do you think, think it's comical. Nike? I find Jalen Brown. I, why are you I think gargling his story? Well, it, it is true. Nike does run Team USA. <laughs> And they supply the apparel, sports. just like with Oregon. Yeah, yeah, that's well, all they college, for Oregon. Hold on, college is a little different than the Olympics, bro. Okay, in the Olympics, <laughs> you're dealing with an Olympic committee. Yeah, you're dealing with Team USA basketball. You're dealing with like grown ass men who make fifty, sixty million dollars a year. It's a mm. little different than college. Okay, pump your freaking brakes there, bro. So was Oregon like the SMU 
prior to NIL being a thing? Because Oregon sure got a lot of great players to go up to Eugene. Yeah, again, like I said, college is a little different than dealing with the Olympics. I guess the Olympics is an amateur hour anymore, bro. In case you forgot, in Oregon's defense, everybody's been paying players forever, but Oregon's definitely been, you know. I mean, Nike has a lot of say. Nike has a lot of say in the Oregon program because they they put in a lot of sports, millions of dollars into the school, but they supply the apparel for Team USA. Ooh. You're just gonna keep going. They back also to supply. That. They also supply apparel for every team in the NBA. And no, sp- no sponsorships, though, right? On so do USA. they? Do they pull the strings on every NBA team because they? You know supply what? the apparel. Here's where you go with this, Wes. You you should have right? gone. You should have gone. Like, here. No, are you no, going no, no, deep no. state Nike? No. Nike's you're, the deep state. Is that where you're going with this? You're the, finally you're having fun. But where I would have gone if I was on your position on this is I would have said, "Oh yeah, well, what about Steph Curry? He's an Under Armour player." Well, guess what? I'm not you. <laughs> you didn't think through that. Steph I don't Curry care about it. Steph Curry and who the hell his shoe deal is with. <laughs> I don't care about that. I what love this care? Care? I have because nothing as, to do with Curry. I don't really care about who his shoe deal is with. Your big Nike Oregon symbols in the camera. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you're, I don't you're care. Like a I'm Nike spokesperson. What? You I'm taking that off. I'm taking it off. Like a Nike spokesperson, like a Nike apologist. What does that have to do with anything? We just Nike deep state, bro. Here's the funny thing is, I don't Nike's care. Nike's controlling sports. The funny thing is, I Nike's don't care. writing the scripts for the NFL, bro. The funny thing is, I don't care. It's just a funny situation. Everything about this is hilarious. One, Jalen Brown should be on Team USA. He's not. Two, Derek White shouldn't be on Team USA. He is. Three, one of the players that maybe five years ago we all would have consensus said is one of the best, if not the best player in the NBA, maybe six years, is no longer on Team USA. He got cut, and both his party, his team, and Team USA had to release a statement to protect him. Well, Gilbert, the whole situation is funny, and you don't want to laugh about it. You want to take it ultra seriously, and that's irritating too, okay? Good. I'm glad I'm irritating you. That's my job in life. No, you don't have fun with it. You want, no, you my job in life is to irritate you. you. Yeah, That's you my job. You You're last. getting angry. You're you getting got angry. Last for sure. So apparently, Gilbert Arenas thinks it was a different reason for Kawhi Leonard not Kawhi getting Leonard. cut. Uh, so apparently, Gilbert Arenas uh, was on vacation, and he wasn't. Gilbert Arenas yeah. was. No, Gilbert Arena says Leonard was on vacation. Okay. Gotcha, gotcha. And then what happened yeah. on that? He was uh he made the point that Leonard was enjoying a vacation in Costa Rica, which almost certainly played a role in his lack of fitness for the Olympics. <laughs> I don't know, man. He's a professional basketball player. He's, he probably doesn't have to do much to get back into shape. Like look at James Harden's fat ass every year. I'm sorry, I'm not body shaming. I'm just saying James Harden is a is a uh portly guy <laughs> and somehow he always manages to round himself into shape every single off season so i i don't think it's too hard for an nba player to get know. into shape do you think it's gonna be hard for us as uh the united states hosting the Concacaf uh, uh copa Cup, america copa america pardon me Concacaf and south america copa america the in miami to get security for the families uh you mean because of uruguay going into the stands and fighting people like a bunch of hoodlums well and you saw what they said they said they went to the stands to fight people because the colombian fans were attacking their family there's no video of that that i've seen of their families being attacked i have only seen video of uruguay going into the stands here's the thing ever since luis suarez decided to start biting people's ears off like all of mike tyson uh Uruguay's just been a scrappy, dirty team. They've been a dirty team, and that showed against Colombia when they decided to go into the stands <laughs> and start fighting people like the Pistons. You know, a lot of uh, uh, yeah, we had, we had our own version of Malice at the Palace just happen. Yeah. But you, you know, a lot of South American teams play that kind of violent game, right? A little bit more of a aggressive style, uh, as especially when it pertains as it pertains, pardon me to 
world competitions because these guys are only training for each other for small amounts of time if that makes sense. So they've got to get a game plan together right away. They've got to mesh right away. They've got to get a formations down right away. They've got to get roles down right away. And a lot of that is seen in like that kind of shithousery play, right? Yeah. But to take it into the stands was wild. And you don't do that. It was Darwin Nunez that said his family was being attacked and he felt like he had to go defend his family, but we don't have any video of that. So we just have to take his word for it. Which I'm going to do. And, and some owners are criticizing uh, David Tepper and the security in North Carolina saying, you know, they need to do a better job. We always know where the families are. And some are saying, you know, this is out of proportion. That was not that families weren't in danger, things like that. So, so you do have both sides of the issue being highlighted here. And in reality, I think the focus needs to be, can we protect these people in Miami? Right, because we've got a huge final, a huge South American final. Way to go, Concacaf! Way to choke. Anyway, All huge right. South American final with uh, Colombia against Argentina, and who would have known it would have been fortuitous for Team USA to lose five to zero to Colombia, the eventual finals participant. Uh, so here's the thing: uh, I think security at uh, the Panther Stadium is definitely to blame. Um, they should definitely not be letting fans onto the field and they should not be letting players into the stands. Like it's pretty cut and dry. That's your job. You do your damn job. Yeah, you always do know where the, yeah. uh, according to every owner I've listened to, you do know where the families are at all times. Yeah. So if you know where the families are at all times, that that's especially in a game of this magnitude with these two countries uh, in South America, whose soccer federations probably don't like each other too much. You've yeah, got to make so, sure that that's your number one priority. Yeah. So was was this like a multi year agreement for Concacaf to join up with Copa America? Uh, so in South America's competition, they always invite weird teams. I think that this is a one year thing. I don't know okay. if it's a multi year thing. Yeah. Because they've had teams like Qatar participate in their competition. Oh, they've had teams interesting. like yeah, uh, Japan has competed in their competition before. I think Australia has competed in the South American competition. Yeah. Uh, I think this has a lot to do with the World Cup being the North American World Cup this year. So here's the thing. I don't think that the United States is going to volunteer to uh, host or join the Copa America anytime soon after what happened. A, I they mean, got embarrassed, and B, there was a brawl in the stands. We've had our issues with Mexico when we've played Mexico. We have. I mean, all the way going back to Landon Don Donovan having pee thrown on him. Like, we've, we've had our issues God, with, yeah, with, with, with uh, the Mexico games. So we're <laughs> – CONCACAF isn't, like, innocent in all of this. We, we've had what chance. We shouldn't have gone across uh, the, the loudspeakers. There's been a lot going on. But anyway, like I said, this all culminates in Argentina against Colombia. Who do you have, Wes? I got to go with uh, my boy Messi. Argentina. Wow, real shocker there going with the uh, World Cup champs, huh? The reigning World Cup champs, man. How are you going to how are you going to pick Colombia against the reigning World Cup champs? You I'm don't. going to do it like this. I pick Colombia to win <laughs> to win tonight uh, against uh, uh, tonight on my side of the world. Sorry, sorry. Tomorrow yeah, for all the Americans. The normal side of the world. <laughs> the normal side of the world. Wow. Yeah. How, I said, what a, that's what I said. So what what I a said. topic, American opinion. Yeah, anyway, that's what I said. We we have to go with someone that's up and coming that's what, on a hot streak in Colombia. How many of your viewers are from your side of the world? Yeah, that's why. Colombia. Colombia hasn't lost a game in years. In, in 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 what fifteen games something like that? I don't it's know. It's been a record. long time since Colombia has lost a game. I haven't paid okay. attention to Colombia soccer it might be before. Over Copa a America. year since Colombia has lost the. <laughs> Wes, let you look peek behind the curtain there. I don't really pay attention to the big competitions. I don't really know what's going on outside the big competitions. Soccer is not my favorite sport. Y'all know this. He's a much bigger soccer fan than I am. I pay attention <laughs> to World Cup. Olympics, uh, like Euros, the other big national or internationals. Well, and, right the, before the Olympics, Sounders game or or MLS. Right before the Olympics, Team USA has let go of their coach Greg Berhalter. So a round of applause for I called it. I called it last week. Done. Oh my gosh! Anyway, 
I mean, you, okay, so here's the thing. You've been calling it like every time we talk about it for the last like year and a half. But I actually finally said I think his disgraceful showing in Copa America was probably his last straw, and I was right. You're welcome. <laughs> they, Wester they Dama strikes ready. again. The the pressure was on from the USA fan base, 100. percent Everywhere you look, the pressure was on. It was done for Greg Berhalter. So Agreed. Greg Berhalter, like I said, is a, is a sorry coach, had sorry tactics, and he did not know how to handle the dynamic in the locker room. He didn't know how to be the bad guy. He didn't know how to be the good guy. He didn't know how to be a coach, and now he's not. The search is bye on. Bye. Jurgen bye Klopp bye. has already turned down Team USA, stating that he wants to be retired. I just I don't know who it is that they're gonna go for right now. I, I've heard her Reynard is on in the crosshairs. There's a lot of people that they're looking at. In the reality, they need to make a choice because there's only under uh, under what now just over two years left before the World Cup, or just under two years left uh, before the World I like Cup. It's under two years, yeah. So it, they need to get a coach. They need to get some friendly scheduled, and they need to get some international football played. So they could do something to prep for the World Cup. Go ahead, Wes. Yeah. Canada's coach has also said he has no interest. Well, why would he? Why, why His team would... is actually good. His team can actually make a, a placement game in Copa America. Well, Jesse Marsh is also... Thank you for not completely disappointing CONCACAF Canada. <laughs> Jesse Marsh also has a, buy, has a buy right into the World Cup. He doesn't have to compete for the World Cup. Because there's three hosting nations, Mexico, USA, and Canada. So yeah. Canada has a buy into the World Cup. USA has a buy into the World Cup, which makes it a little bit harder because they don't have to play in tournament play to make it into the World Cup, which, again, means Team USA has to schedule some friendlies when they get their new uh, head coach to mesh together to understand what it's going to take to play under this new system. And I just don't know if it's enough time. It's – yeah, it'll be tough for whoever comes up. Um, but, I mean, I think it's pretty obvious the Canada coach was like, I don't want anything to do with that dumpster fire. That federation, yeah. The USA Soccer Federation is just trash. Uh, USA Women won today, so that's good. They won their game, and they're still figuring it out. But that team's stacked with talent, just stacked yeah. with talent, and they know how to use it. Also, uh, I, think... I mean, can, can we petition – for FIFA to get their head out of their asses and actually like kind of lift some of the restrictions on the Olympic soccer for the men's. They won't. It's, it's so stupid. Like they, there's so many restrictions on like the, the premier teams and stuff like that as to like, they don't have to acknowledge that it's like an international tournament, like all the others. And they can tell the players, no, they can be like, no, we're yeah. not going to let you play on the, on the team. And it's stupid. And so because of that, I think out of like the top 10 player or like the top 100 players in the world, there's only like seven or eight that are playing. Yeah, no, I've already seen Team USA's it's an, uh, Olympic It's an roster. amateur. Yeah, it's an yeah. amateur tournament is what it is. And, and we've got an amateur roster going. That doesn't apply for the women's. And so you're always going to see the best teams playing in the Olympics for the women's soccer. But I'm so excited to see the women's side of the Olympics this year, to see what Team USA can do, what they come up with under their new coach. And, I mean, she's fantastic. That's the one thing that Team USA did correctly is they hired her. Can and she coach the men's team? Pretty that's please. exactly what everybody's saying, is can she coach the men's team? And yeah. it's <laughs> – I mean – it's so bad that uh, it's gotten to the point where we don't know who the coach is going to be for Team USA and what they're going to be able to do to make a different difference. Pardon me, but the Olympics is a great, way, great way to prep, and we're I'm actually excited to see the women's team and Emma Hayes and what they can do in the Olympics. Like, can Emma Hayes? build a new golden generation of USA women's soccer? Because, like I said, that team doesn't. Uh, go through a rebuilding phase, they just reload. Yeah. Team USA's women time. are stacked. Yeah, they're just stacked. It's just a stacked roster. So can Emma Hayes take them to the next level? Because she is widely regarded as an amazing hire, as a great coach. And I think it, it remains to be seen. I think it'll I think it'll turn out pretty well. I think we win the Olympics. 
I think we win the Olympics. Team yeah, USA Olympics. wins the Olympics. The USA. Olympics. USA. Not, not we win all the golds. All the golds. Not in men's soccer, not in women's soccer. We're just going to win the Olympics. I all the golds. Every gold medal. The Olympics. Every gold medal, <laughs> USA. Uh, so, that aside, with us winning the Olympics, what did you think of Mike Gundy's response to one of his players being <laughs> charged with the DUI? Uh, I think his response was, uh, I, oh, three or four beers and then you drive. I've done that like a thousand times or whatever. It's like, and, bro, so you, you shouldn't be admitting that. You, you should be coach admit to drinking and driving during a press conference. So bad, dude. And, <laughs> and then he was like, I was just trying to make it seem like people make mistakes. First of all, your player had a DUI. Just say, we don't condone that. And that's yeah, all you we- got to do. We don't condone drinking and driving and move on. You in, instead backwards of backwards idiot. Him. Mike Gundy, you backwards idiot. I don't know. I don't even Bro. know what PR spit has to be done for this. I know they're already got the wheels spinning on how to fix this, but yo. <laughs> Dude, they gotta I, have a headache right now. I'm the coach of this football team. Uh oh team like have three or four drinks and then go driving. What, what what kind of human even says that out loud at a press conference? Like this, is the, an idiot. It's the craziest thing ever. And he's like, "Yeah, maybe I'll punish him by giving him fifty carries a game." Wes, do you know who the number one running back, like by consensus right now in college football, is? Who? Actually, that I don't know. Guy. That <laughs> guy. He's gonna punish him in the team by feeding him the rock. Yeah, exactly. The best running back in college football is going to continue to get the ball. And this is just what's crazy. that? You haven't had a concussion yet? Well, you will now. <laughs> I, gotta, I guess it's really. I can punish him by giving him a concussion so he makes even dumber decisions. I guess it's really about the kids, right? Developing the kids and teaching them how to make right and wrong decisions. It's not about the money or winning. So dumb. So dumb. <laughs> Your favorite team. This baseball. is why you're not in the SEC, Oklahoma State. Idiots. I, I, I'm not going to lie. I think they made the right decision to not go into the SEC because they would never have a shot in the playoff. Oh, the hell SEC. no. No. This is their but, only uh, shot. Wes, your, your favorite baseball team, the New York Yankees, Aaron Judge. Hit his, <laughs> hit his 34th home run. Enemy? Hit his 34th home run before the All-Star I don't All-Star care playoff. how many home runs he hit. Setting a Yankees record. And why aren't we more interested in this stuff anymore? That's an interesting gesture to do on the Because TV. it's the Yankees. Nobody cares about Aaron Judge or the Yankees. And also, he's probably on roids. <laughs> he's probably on roids. You're going to be the first one to say it. You're going to throw yeah. that out there recklessly. We'll so say that it. Say if it. he yeah. pops a sword, it, bro. He's on roids. Right this is why you did it. So if it actually happens, you can be like, I predicted that. I said that was going to happen. And it happened. Rewind the tape. Well, I'm pretty sure the whole Yankees team is on roids because... The whole Yankees team. Now we've won up it. Now we've gone up an extra yeah. level. We've gone from he's probably on roids to I'm pretty sure the entire Yankees team... The FBI team is, is investigating. Massive scandal. It's going to break any day. <laughs> why Deep is state this, Yankee roids. Why is this not a bigger story, though? Because it's you, at the All Star break, and, and nobody cares. You're gonna stick to it. You might yeah. represent most of America, though. I'm not gonna <laughs> lie. Like most of America might be in the same boat as you. Maybe you're right. Maybe nobody. They don't cares care anymore. about baseball until we get to the playoffs. I think it's because he's not competing with anybody. I think it's because, like I said, there's no race right now. There's no home run race. It's just him hitting That's 34 home runs. That's a good point. There's yeah, nobody if there else. Yeah, there are multiple players. Yeah, if there are multiple yeah. players, we would be all over that, right? Yeah. Um... Yeah, I mean, it's kind of like when one guy's just doing all the work. It's like, cool, bro. We want <laughs> we want competition. We do, and we want to see it, and we want to thrive on it, and we want to eat it up when it's going on. Uh, and also, no big, one cares because he's a Yankee. We have a big competition going on right now, and we've been waiting and waiting and waiting to talk about it, and we're going to end the show with it. We've got the Euros, and we've got the Euro final coming up. And what an exciting game we had. For England against the Netherlands. And what an exciting game we had for Spain against France. I mean, Most two, of those were come from behind wins. What And what a goal from the 16-year-old Spaniard with his left foot. Hitting it with his left. Anyone that watches European yeah, football. Are, he's 16. 
yeah, watches football, uh, European football or soccer on the regular understands what a difficult shot that was. What an insane shot that was. And he's 16 years old. And he moved the ball onto his left foot and rocket launched right it. Right between his legs. Game. Was this the one right between his legs? Yeah, yes. Gee, that was crazy, yeah. I was like, how do you do that? So he's Yamal, 16. like this, you know dude's, this dude's still in high school. And he's so you like, know what's funny about this dude, now. Yamal? You know what's funny about him? What's There's up? a picture of Lionel Messi holding him for a marketing campaign when he was an infant. No. 16 years. Yeah. Yeah, they found a picture of Lionel Messi holding Yamal when he was a little baby. <laughs> How do we know it's actually Yamal? Okay. <laughs> this is a conspiracy. Cynical. This is a conspiracy now. That's what a lot of the cynical people are saying. But if you go ahead and look it up during the show, I can filibuster for you for a minute so you can see it. But there's a picture that went viral, and it's Lionel Messi holding Yamal uh, when he was a baby. And I don't Lionel need to Messi look up doing lies. A campaign. I don't need to look up lies. This is just lies to make him even more famous. Like, dude, you're 16. You're already famous. You made an awesome <laughs> shot. You don't need some little made-up AI-generated image. AI-generated? What is going on with you right now? Anyway, the England game was crazy, and you know who scored the winning goal for England? Was it Jude? No, it was Ollie Watkins. Ollie, Ollie Watkins. Oh, that's right. Ollie, Ollie Watkins. Yes. Yes. Ollie, Ollie Watkins free. So Ollie That's Watkins. Brother. That's my brother. Do you know who Ollie Watkins plays for? Aston Villa. He's one of the best strikers in the Premier League. Cool. And he scored. And the Villa fans went nuts. The Villa fan went nuts. And what's great about that is I was literally talking to a co-worker whose son uh, plays soccer here in England. And I was like, you know, I'd really love to see them substitute in Ollie Watkins. I mean, Harry Kane is great, and I get it. They're never going to take him off. He's the captain. But oh, no. He, he looks like he's been having trouble running up and down the field. He looks like he's a little hurt, and I think it'd be cool to see somebody that's healthy that can keep up with that front line of England running down the field. And sure enough, they sub him in, and what does he do? He creates a gap in the defense, and he scores the game-winning goal in the 90th minute. And I just I, I found that absolutely fantastic. I really did. I truly found that to be like – uh an amazing moment, but Harry Kane made the penalty. And a lot of people thought that was controversial, that penalty in, in general. Yeah. Um, so first of all, congrats to England and congrats to Spain. Uh, but while we're on the top of England players, uh, I came across something today that was actually like kind of gross. Um, so Declan Rice, um, I guess like recently his girlfriend's been getting like a lot, like both of them have been getting a lot of backlash because she's like a little bit heavier set and everyone's like, Oh, he should dump her and get Jesus like Christ. Being a model. I'm like, what the hell is wrong with people? I'm like, this dude's like loyal to his girlfriend that he's probably known for a long time. And that's a bad thing. Yeah. It's kind of gross. It's that is it's annoying. Come on. People's people. personal. This yeah. is the, this is the biggest issue I have with anything. Well, not the biggest issue. I, it's not, uh, let me not get into how social media is keeping people very stupid. And they're making stupid decisions and believing anything that comes across their timeline. But also this harassing people and their families and stuff like it's come on. Yeah. Grow up like finding Seriously. things on the Internet. It, it's just disgusting. And I think, honestly, it, at some point in the future, that will be a crime like defamation of character or something will come into play here where they're just destroying people's lives online for no reason other than they're just terrible people. Sad. It's stupid. But I don't want to end the show there, Wes. I want to end the show here. So you you have your opportunity to actually make a real prediction again. You've already called Argentina. I've called Colombia. Let's see if we're on opposite sides of the fence here. I'm going to make my pick first. So you don't Portugal a while back, and uh, yeah, I, I told gonna... you you were wrong. I told you you were wrong. So I mean, here's the thing with Portugal. I think um, I think they were bit by Ronaldo's ego. I'm so happy you didn't phrase it the way. Like I'm so happy you didn't phrase that the way I thought you were about to phrase that. He but... was playing. He was not playing good, and he would re he refused to let himself get substituted. Yeah, yeah. No, they were held back by Ronaldo for sure. And he so, also missed that penalty and then cried like a little baby. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna harp on somebody for crying. <laughs> Men, you're allowed to cry. Anyway, so. Where I'm going to go with this, Wes, is I'm going to say who I'm going, I think is going to win this. And I know I live in a certain country, but I'm just going to say it. 
I think Spain's going to win this this Euros. I said World Cup. My bad. My bad. I think Spain's going to win the Euros. You're what do you it. think? Spain. You think so too? Spain. Yeah. Spain and Portugal, they're basically the same. All right. <laughs> Damn it, Wes. Anyway, uh, <laughs> as far as their tact is concerned and their teams are concerned is what he's saying. I'm sticking with the Western European countries, the real European countries. So, <laughs> so we're going with Spain here on the sad fit. As always, we appreciate you joining us each and every week. Thank you so much. We will see you next week. Adios. Go Spain. Viva! <laughs>